mm-hmm. just because they didn't know where that was going to go. And I think they also began separating themselves from some people because they knew that there were going to be things coming out um, that they were going to have to get ahead of at some point in time. Well, I was reading um, or yesterday, I think it was yesterday, reading or listening or one of those, <laughs> some media outlet, um, but they were talking about how she was going to reverse some of his um, – some of his laws, some of Bill Clinton's laws, that he, she stood by him and enacted. You know, I mean, though she was just the first lady, you can't tell me that the first lady doesn't have um, opinions that she gives the president. We all know, you know, we all know how relationships okay. work. <laughs> You're married, right? Of right? course. I'm, any you know any relationship is a relationship. Some, somebody's, there's going to be input, there's going to be feedback, there's going to be discussion. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, and it would be unnatural to think it was otherwise. Right, right, right. And to stand beside him, you know, I mean, and support it. Um, so, well, Robert, have you ever thought about running for office? I have, and I've come to the, the realization, much like uh, Gary Johnson has, is that I just don't have the money to do it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it, pretty, it, the unfortunate um, consequence... The unfortunate business of politics is the business of politics, and it's become a, it's become he who has the most money wins. That's true. I actually, like a, we were, you and I were discussing. I did, um, I did actually run, but halfway through it, I decided I didn't want to be a politician. I didn't like asking people for money, and I didn't, I didn't like all people, of that stuff. I wanted to be a watchdog. Yeah, I, you know, I think. Nobody wants to be a politician except for politicians. Politicians, you know, inherently are bad people. The the, yeah. the book definition of a politician is somebody who seeks public office for fame, money, and power. And that's that's the wrong person in any job. That's not the guy you really want to have running. What we really need and where we started out as, and I say this all the time, is you, you want a statesman in office. You don't want... You don't want a politician in office, and you sure as hell don't want lawyers in office. And a lot of people think right. you either have to be a lawyer or a high-paid businessman to be in politics. And really, that's not what this was ever meant to be. This was meant to be governed by the people for the people, and we've kind of lost sight of that. We've, we've become so apathetic in our voting that a lot of people just vote their party line. And when asked about when asked about the policies of somebody else under the guise that their candidate said it, they'll actually agree with it. They, they did, people today do no research. They're uninformed. And they're, they well, largely they don't want to educate themselves. Now, we had, I've had that discussion with several folks, and it, to me, that is what that is what would correct our, our current situation with the, the social and the societal mentality that we have right now, that everything is owed to everyone except for they don't have to put and contribute anything back. So to me, that you're right. You're absolutely right. And they don't go out and they don't research these people that they go out and just check a box for just because, oh, I like their name, or, oh, she looks cute on TV, or, you know, I mean, they don't look at the candidate, and I believe that that is how many of our elected officials get elected, and you're right, because when we first started this country, it was business folks, farmers, it was not lawyers, it wasn't anything of that nature. And that's correct, and we've lost sight of that. We <clears throat> most kids, uh, and I say kids, I'm 41 years old, so pretty much everybody under I my age too. range. Is, wow. I, some, I, <laughs> I, I sometimes think that we've, they're not looking back. This wasn't always the business of politics. There was a large portion of our history where our politicians came together in Washington. They, they met in Washington, then they went home, and they worked their everyday jobs. They, they weren't paid. And it, it's the destruction of any republic, any democracy, is as soon as it's the government finds out that it can pay itself from the coffers, that becomes the, the decline of society. No, I completely agree with that um, because you can't – how do you have someone in office for 50 years? <laughs> That's insane to me. We need term limits. So how we do. do. You feel I, about, and, um, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and you know, this is one of those things. The Senate imposed a term limit on the president, but they didn't impose one on themselves. Right, exactly. Yeah, and people don't people don't look at that. They said that, and it was enacted because they felt that nobody should have power for that long. So if it's one person that can't have power for more than eight years, why do we why do we allow a Senate to do that? Well, I have to ask you um, one question because I follow this, and this is something that I, I, I like to get everyone's take on to see because this is another thing that people aren't very familiar with, and they're not educating themselves on it. And it's huge if it were to happen. How are how have you heard about the Commission of the States, or how do you feel about that with the Article Five um, 
convention that they're trying to push? I have not been following. I've been, uh, to be honest. Okay, no, that's okay. I just, I just like to, to, to see if, if folks are um, up to speed on that because that's huge with the, with the, like you said, there's not statesmen involved right now, <laughs> and doing many. Right now, I, I, I will certainly look it up. I've been, uh, <laughs> I, I've been busy with a lot of projects You've been busy. lately. You've been very I've busy. Been, okay, so um, let's see. You, um, your company is based out of Tampa, right? That is correct. And yeah, we, the we company are, that is over, you want to talk about that a little bit, your your charity? Sure. Well, we have <clears throat> Mainspring Charities actually is a, we're kind of a, a broad charity and we were we do a lot of fundraising with local organizations. Um, and it really started with just a couple of uh, local baseball organizations, Buddy Ball, which is a, a fantastic organi- organization here in Tampa. They allow uh, they allow people with disabilities to play baseball, football, and um cheerleading by by pairing them up with uh, able children uh, and they, they really get a lot of support so we started out with them and we were doing a lot of fundraising with them we decided we really needed to do something where the money that we were making from running these things for them we could actually just contribute back so we came up with uh we decided to start a charity and that runs entirely it, we don't pull a salary from that everything that comes into that it is entirely a not-for-profit company um so anytime we help out any local charities any anybody who comes to us who's uh starting up their 5013c um we try to we try to do everything we do through them and then donate all the money that we bring in back to other companies that we work with Wow, so you're really giving back to the community, and, and that's awesome, and more areas than one. Yeah, and that's what, you know, our Farsighted Media is our parent company, um, and they're they're kind of, they control that. Farsighted Media is a for-profit company, and it makes its own money. Uh, this just allows us to do something where we can really kind of give back, and we, we do a lot locally. So and anything we can do wherever we can give back, we like to give back. It It really does pay off in the end. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it is there's something satisfying feeling about knowing that you've helped someone, and and I completely get that. I wish more people would understand that and start doing. It. But um, so if I wanted to send a cigar to Clinton, I'm sorry, Hillary Clinton, at this time right now, would would that be able to happen, or are we hung up, or how's that work? Uh, that we are still taking orders. Uh, we are absolutely confident um, that we have a fallback plan. Uh, and we are absolutely confident that sometime within the next 24 hours, we will have one of these two cigar manufacturers that we're discussed that we're in talks with uh, completely on board. As I said, they came to us, so they're, that's very positive for it. So we decided to go ahead and keep the keep the site open. Uh, one way or another, we will have uh, our first uh, shipment out as soon as possible. Okay, so um, if I don't want to do the cigar thing, are there other ways that I can contribute to not only this? Um, because you're going to give this money to, to to some veterans, but are there other ways that I can contribute to some of the other things that you're working on? Um, right now, I mean, we have on the site you can do a monetary contribution if you just want to straight give money. Uh, we also sell T-shirts. Um, that's a lot of stuff that we're doing right now. I think one of the biggest things that anybody can do, we're working on a Get Involved package um, that we're hoping to have launched by Monday on the site. Uh, but one of the biggest things that people can do is really to to spread the word, not necessarily about our site, but just about educating voters. You know, and let them know what's going on. Remind people of why we've had problems in the past with with Hillary Clinton, with the Clintons in general, um, and really, and to take a look at things. I think education, voter education, is extremely important. Now, I completely think we have a people problem, and that, and that, that if we solve that problem and educating people on, um, you know, just how the system works, it's not rocket science. Really, it's not. But they make it. They want it. They want people to be afraid of the system and to not be interested in it because then they get to do what they want to do. That's correct. A, a docile population is the easiest to control. Right. Exactly. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. And if is there anything else that you would like to to talk about or um, let people know? Uh, no. I mean, you've been great, and we're so glad that you, I'm so glad you had us on today, uh, and so glad that you support us. Yeah, I, I really feel oh, like a big part yeah. of our weekend wouldn't have been possible without you. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I just was reading an article in um, Chess while ago, actually, one that um, it said something about how this went viral, and then it went to the Gwen Beck show, and I actually was the one who posted on their page, and I didn't even realize 
that you got like all these hits over the weekend. I thought that saw it and he told me that the website had crashed was joking because <laughs> I had like 300 <laughs> shares from my page alone. And that to me, that's just amazing. And that just goes to show you that what you're doing is a good thing, one, and two, that people are sick of the Clintons. They really are. Yeah. And like you like you touched on earlier, we've had we've had some negative feedback, but largely we have positive feedback, and people see that on the surface of what appears to be a crash joke is really just a way of saying like, hey, you you know you guys need to get involved. People need to be involved in this process, and, and you know put their voice out there and make their opinion known. Because right now, I mean, it, it's sad to say that most polls show that Clinton is leading. Uh, as of this moment in time, and, and that's kind of sad because that's really, I think that's just an apathetic, I think it's an apathetic vote that people are saying. They're just like, whatever. Yeah, I mean, please tell me that, I mean, I just, I can't, I can't imagine what a country is going to look like with her at the helm. I just, I just can't imagine. It's, I, anyway, on that note, I will let you go because I know you had a lot of interviews yesterday and you're tired of talking. <laughs> My, my voice so is killing me. I'm not much of a speaker. <laughs> uh, well, I don't have that problem. But uh, So if there's ever anything I can do for you, Rob, just or you guys, just let me know. And I uh, thank you for your time. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Val. You too. And everyone, um, that is it for my show. You will be able to find this on YouTube uh, later on if you want to uh, listen to it or share it. Um, you can do so. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, Val Emmons, um, www.facebook.com backslash Val Emmons. And you can also tweet at me uh, at Val Emmons. Um, let me know what you think. And have a great weekend. <laughs>